complete miracle. Some three months ago, the Lord woke my wife up, Patty, and, and uh, gave her a rhema word from the Logos and said, I'm going to give you your miracle in your husband and he's going to walk normally again. And that was about five o'clock in the morning and, uh, and took my wife into about a two hour intercession uh, and spent that time just simply praising God and thanking him for that rhema word. She said, Peter, I had to hear it myself from the Lord, myself. She said, I, I knew it all, I'd heard it all, I, I, I took most of those phone calls for you, and I said, but I had to hear it myself. And she said, and when I got that rhema, uh, she said, that settles it for me. Hallelujah. I'm saying this because I want you to know that God does give us his oracle word, his rhema word. Hallelujah. And uh, if you want, if you want a, a, a feast, read the book of Hebrews, particularly the first four chapters, and then into the ninth and tenth chapters, which speaks of the new and living way, not the Moses way, but the Lord Jesus Christ way. And uh, you'll find there that uh, in chapter four, it says that he himself becomes the living word the very living, the very marrow that flows through our bones becomes Jesus himself. Hallelujah. So praise God for that. This morning I'm going to continue with the theme that God has given our church here. As you can see we have two pillars or maybe if you like, if you were a, a, a train, two railway lines. On the one side here we have breakthrough and on the other we have turning point. And, uh, and I just can't get that out of my head and out of my spirit. I believe that's what God is saying. God has made a promise that we, not only uh, as a nation, but particularly here as a church, we're going to have a breakthrough. Amen. And the kind of breakthrough that he talks about in his word. And I'm going to give you these scriptures uh, today uh, because that's what is laid on my heart. And uh, uh, so I'm not going to uh, preach uh, anything uh, new or something maybe that you've never ever heard before. <laughs> uh, excuse me for a moment. Go back to these jolly glasses. How they got twisted in there. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but, uh, you know, my pastor used to say to me, Peter, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> and uh, he, he was right. Hallelujah. Uh, anyway, what I've written here for our tape, it is time for breakthrough through the power of turning point. There you go. Does that make sense? So I'm picking up on the theme that God has given us. We're going to see through the scriptures and, uh, and today what I'm going to do is refer you to three awesome Old Testament stories. And if I can do nothing more than just quote those scriptures, those stories, and leave them with you for you to work out and see how that through those three stories, God illustrates to us for now, for now, this breakthrough that he has promised. The breakthrough is the promise. The, uh, how to get that promise is through the turning points that we have to make in our lives, the decisions that we have to make, the uh, steps that we have to do. So I'm going to take these three stories one by one and uh, read them out to you uh, and see if we can learn from these and have our breakthrough. I believe each one of you are on the threshold of another breakthrough. 
And just before I proceed, uh, can may I just excuse myself in this? Chrissy, where are you? Uh, Chrissy, thank you for sharing your testimony this morning. Um, I think you heard me say to you before the service, uh, for three days this week, God had called me to pray and to intercede for Chris. Now, I haven't talked to you for months. I don't know when I last spoke to you. Uh, but l for some reason, for three days this week, I've had you in intercession. And I knew you were going, playing games somewhere. And I knew, and I knew exactly what was going on, I knew exactly what you were doing, and I knew exactly how you were being tempted. And for those three days, I was going through hell with you. And we broke through. We had a breakthrough. And I knew exactly when it stopped, and I knew exactly when it was starting to lift off you. I want to say to you, don't take these things that happen to you, especially spiritually, lightly. When you get these feelings, they're not just feelings, or it's not just a hunch, or not just a, a thought. Listen, this could be the rhema word of God coming, either directly to you or through someone else to you. But God's got ways and means of getting to you, <laughs> and he will. Praise God, because he loves you. You heard the prayer that uh, Pastor Mike prayed uh, in giving thanks for the cross and the communion elements. That love, that love, God says, I love you so much that I'm hard after you. I run hard after you because I love you. And uh, folks, today we are here for a breakthrough. You are waiting and you are in a place, and if you're prepared to do, take the turning point in your life, just like these here that we're going to learn from. The first one is Joshua. If you'd like to turn to Joshua chapter 1, and we're going to read the first nine verses. Now Joshua had to learn to make a turning point in his life. He had been so... Uh, Influenced, if you like, motivated by Moses, his father, his spiritual father, that uh, he, he was really living another life. He was living a mosaic life. But the day came when God had to get Moses, uh, Joshua around the neck and say, Listen, I want you, Joshua. I don't want another Moses. I want you. And I want you to hear what I've got to say. And so listen to this story here in Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore... Arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness right through to Lebanon as far as the great river Euphrates and all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left or in, or, so that you may prosper wherever you go. For this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, 
that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Have I not therefore commanded you, be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Now there you have it. Story number one. The way to breakthrough. For Joshua, forget the past. Forget about Moses. Forget about the way Moses did it. Now, this that is happening to you is for you, Joshua. I want you. And this territory is for you and the children of Israel that I've given you. You've got a new congregation. You've got a new territory. And now you've got a new calling on your life. Don't look at Moses' life. Look at the one that I'm giving you. Hallelujah. And God is saying to each one of us, that we have to make a turning point from the mosaic to the Joshua or from the mosaic to the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And that simply means that praise God as we have used the mosaic as a, if you like, a foundation to build on, now the building has to be the Joshua building. Moses built according to what was given him to build and completed it well. But notice what he said twice at the opening sentence and then in verse 2. My servant, what does verse 2 say? Would you like to read it? Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over. And go over. And leave behind the past. As good as it might be. As much as I might love it. And even maybe share a tear or two. You know, I'll never forget the day when I let go of my 1968 uh, Pontiac Parisian pillarless car. I had had this thing for years and years. Restored it from top to bottom. Cut out and made it new again. And then this day, I sold it to this man at Renmark in the Riverland and I thought, oh no. And I saw it going down Marion Road and I'm peeping in and then peeping out as I can see it fading away down Marion Road. And I'm thinking, oh, there she goes. <laughs> Did I do the right thing? <laughs> and even now, while I'm talking, I'm dreaming about it. <laughs> But that was that. Moses was good for that time. We had fun in that Parisian. Went all over Australia, the jolly thing. Pulled a 28-foot 20, van with it. But you know, its time was up for me. Now it was a new day. It's a new day for us. If we want this turning point, we've got to make the decision. We've got to take this story like Joshua and say, yes, yes. And notice what he commanded him. Notice the command is threefold. Verse 5, verse 7, and verse 9. Verse 5, no man shall be, be able to be with you. And, and then he says there, he says, I will be with you. I will never leave you. Verse 6, he says, be strong and of good courage. Did you see that? Verse 6, be strong and of good courage. And then when you get down, further down, uh, he goes on and he says, uh, verse 8, this book shall be in your uh, so on. And then he says, for you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall prosper. Verse 9, have I not commanded you to be strong and of very good courage? And do not 
be afraid and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you. Yes, I was dismayed as I saw the old Ponty going down Marion Road. But I had to believe there was something better than the Ponty around the corner. And it was, and it did, and it came. Hallelujah. And you know something? We've got something better right now waiting for you. And Chrissy, you went into something this week and don't you ever let that slip again because from now on, you're going to be surprised what's going to happen from here on. You're going to be absolutely amazed at what's going to happen. And you won't even have to ask for it. You just simply have to walk in it. Just be strong and very courageous. Folks, when you get that turning point, be strong and very courageous and don't let it go hallelujah amen all right there's a second one the second story that i can't get out of my head is the story of the four lepers and i'm going to ask my nephew to assist me here today and mike you've got the new american standard i'd like you to read this story out of the new american sometimes i use the New King James and sometimes I use the New American Standard in my studies because I found these two Bible translations to be the most balanced translation as far as teaching goes. May not be the easiest to read but they are definitely uh, uh, both very good teaching translations. The New King James and the New American Standard. So Mike will you read the story of the four lepers, starting from verse 3, all right? So that's two second to verse 7. Okay. And then go down to verse 16. Okay, here we go. Yeah, verse 3. Second yeah. Kings 7. Yeah, second Kings 7 and uh, reading verse 3. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, coming back and they said to one another why do we sit here until we die if we say we will enter the city then the famine is in the city and we will surely die there and if we sit here we die also now therefore come and let us go over to the camp of the Syrians if they spare us we shall live and if they kill us, we shall but die. And they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. When they came to the outskirts of the camp the Syri of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear a sound of chariots and a sound of horses, even the sound of a great army. So they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Therefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp, just as it was, and fled for their life. When these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent and ate and drank and carried from there silver and gold and clothes and went and hid them and they returned and entered another tent and carried from there also and went and hid them then they said to one another we are not doing right this is a day of good news but we are keeping silent if we wait until morning light punishment will overtake us now therefore come let us go and tell the king's household verse 16, yeah. okay. and verse 16 so the people went out and plundered the camp of the Syrians then a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel according to the word of the Lord now the king appointed the royal officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate but the people trampled on him at the gate and he died just as the man of God had said who spoke when the king came down 
to him. And it came about, just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow about this time at the gate of Samaria. Then the royal officer answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he said, Behold, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him. For the people trampled on him at the gate, and he died. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mike. Did you get that story? Do you see here four lepers? And someone scoffed. And the one that scoffed was given a word also. Both were rhema words. One for blessing and one for cursing. To the one who scoffed, he said, this time tomorrow, you're going to see it, but you're not going to eat it. Because they're going to trample all over you and you're going to lose your life over it. Because you did not believe. You did not take the opportunity of your turning point. I was ready to give you a breakthrough. But you let it go. You let it slip. You became callous. And you scoffed at my blessing. And it's gone. It's gone. And you're going with it. But to these four lepers, stay here, we die. Let's go and see what may behold us. Let's take the turning point. We don't understand it. It's foreign, scary, but we know we've heard from God. This is a word from my Lord. See, these were four lepers. They were unclean. They, were, they weren't allowed to mix. They, weren't allowed, they had to be outside the camp, outside the city. They weren't allowed to fellowship. They weren't allowed to live even with their own family. They were excommunicated from life. But for one thing, God had provided a turning point. A turning point that would take them into a new and living way. That new and living way is what we discover when we come to the Lord Jesus. And he becomes our new and living way. God has a turning point for each be serious about this. Take these stories home, read them, and ask the Lord to show you what he wants you to hear. Why did he give them to Peter Vacker? Well, he was studying to share this word with you. I've been studying this thing for over three months, haven't I? Ray, I've been warning about wanting to finish this message. Because it's there, it's bubbling in my spirit every time. And, and he said, look, I've given you three stories by three great incidences. And if they will follow those principles, I will do the same for them. A new and living way. Today we had some worship and uh, I don't know when I was last led by this kind of worship that we had like we had this morning with the Lord's Prayer himself. Come on, I thought Jesus was here leading us. When did you last get led by Jesus with his own prayer like this morning? Long time ago. I've had it once or twice in my 57 years of ministry. So thank you, Jeff. I appreciate the leading of the Holy Spirit today in the worship. And uh, folks, with that, kind of, with that kind of introduction from Jesus himself, we've got a new turning point. 
There's a new turning point coming for each and every one of you. Some of you have had some turning points. If I was to say, stop right now and think right now, the last major turning point, what was it? Maybe a relationship, maybe a marriage, maybe a new commitment in a job opportunity, or maybe a piece of real estate. I don't know. There's a turning point in your life only just recently. The last two or three years, you've had a turning point, a major one. Do you remember it? Do you give thanks for it? But now, be ready for the next one because there's another breakthrough coming. There's another breakthrough coming. I promise you, before, before the end of December comes, there's going to be a jubilee type of experience in your life that will bring you a new turning point. Get ready for it. It will affect you, and in some cases it will affect your family, your sons and daughters. Be ready for it. This is a very important, exciting time we're living in. And I'm not just making this up. Uh, I'm telling you that this is a time to do what Jesus said. Be alert. Be ready. You know, be watchful and pray. Watch and pray. Uh, literally. Literally, watch and pray. There's a, a stirring going on in the mulberry trees. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a wind blowing. And it's a very precious wind of the Holy Spirit. You don't know which way it's coming. You don't know which way it's going to go. But it's blowing. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the other thing the Lord said to me, he said, don't worry about the numbers. Have a look at the substance. Have a look at what I'm going to give you. Have a look at the people that I'm going to send you. And work with them. For these are the ones that are going to receive the turning point that I give them. And you will be able to share their breakthrough. And live that breakthrough with them. So folks... Let us not judge as man would judge, but let the Holy Spirit bring to us and to our call, to our door, whomsoever he wants us to speak to, to encourage, to entertain, to even have in your home and share a meal with. Over recent months, the Lord has spoken to Patty and I to just number certain ones that he lays on our heart and be prepared to do what God says to do and to speak as God says to speak. The prophetic word, the prophetic hour is breaking open. It's time to stop playing religious games. It's time to stop going to church. And it's time to be the church. It's time to be the oracle of God. To be seen and heard. And to be received as the oracle of God. Hallelujah. I can stand here <laughs> in a, some semi-state of uh, incapacitation and say to you that over recent months I've had the privilege of entertaining people that I thought I would never entertain. And, were, and these are people of high places. And I'm saying, Father, when I was well and able and running upstairs, you didn't bring these along. Now that I'm half crippled, here you bring these to my door. I feel so embarrassed, Lord. He said, that's what I want you to be. I want the self in you to die. Uh, true. 
I've never felt so humbled. <laughs> True, I have. I, I felt, Lord, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm working in you. Amen. Amen. And Father, thank you. I appreciate what you're doing because now I want to see the fruit. Glory to God. I want to see the fruit. I see smiling faces. Glory to God. And I want to leave you with this because time has gone. It's 10 past 12. Uh, there's another story, but we'll share that later. That's a big story, that one. And it's going to take more than 20 minutes. So at next turning point, I will be back to share with you the third story that will bring us a completion to the breakthrough that God has for us in this place. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for that which is set before us today. For Pastor Ray and Co is this wedding. I pray that you go before them and cause them to become the oracle of God in marriage. And as they speak and as they perform this marriage, It'll be just like Jesus when you performed your marriage, Lord, uh, to those people back there and turned water into wine. And so, Lord, we thank you for the blessing that's going to follow today. And I thank you now for each and every one of us here as we go our different ways for this coming week and for this coming month. We thank you that a breakthrough is at our door and we are ready to make and take the turning point in our lives. We thank you that you have been so gracious, so loving and merciful. We submit and yield to you like uh, Demi said, the thing she learned most in her life, right from when she was young in marriage, was to submit and yield to you and hear the voice of the Spirit. So Lord, we ask you to help us hear that voice and to follow hard after it and be led by it to that place that you have for us, and we will be careful to give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, I don't know who's taking over from me. Uh, uh, Tony, right, thank thanks. You. Thank all right, thank you. If those people who are coming with us can just come out and meet us in the foyer, and Tony's just going to uh, run the rest of the meeting. So if you can come now, if you, uh, Chrissy and Eric, you're coming, and uh, whoever else, if we can go straight away, we can't delay because we've got to.